I've had this tri-tip sitting in the refrigerator with this dry rub on it for about the last 24 hours. I'm going to be cooking it today using a combination of the cast iron skillet and my countertop oven. Now you can use whatever dry rub is your personal preference and what you can do is take a knife or a fork and just poke it all over the place and both sides to allow the dry rub to really get in or in my case I've just used this meat tenderizer to do so. Then you want to cover it up and put it in the refrigerator for anywhere between 6 to 24 hours is a really good sort of stretch of time to sort of let it kind of get into that meat really deep. And I've taken this out of the refrigerator and I'm letting it get to room temperature and in the meantime I'm preheating my cast iron skillet in my oven at 300 degrees. You can also kind of preheat your pan on the stove. I just find it's better for myself to just preheat it in the uh, countertop oven. It's pretty energy efficient and heats up fast so it's not an issue there. And then I can put it hot right onto the burner. My meat's been resting for about an hour out here and I'm just going to brush it with a little oil. I'm using canola oil. I just find I can use a little less oil if I oil the meat and just pour a little bit into the pan. There I go. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more of my rub. There we go. On here and it's just a barbecue rub I make myself. It's got some paprika and some uh, garlic and olive or not olive uh, onion powder, a little bit of sugar, some cumin, whatever kind of stuff you like is obviously what you're going to use. All right I'm gonna get the pan out of the oven and get ourselves ready to put this on. My pan is well heated and I'm just gonna pour the remaining tablespoon of oil in here. And get my meat right in there. And what I'm going for is about four minutes per side. And then I'm gonna put it right into a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes per pound. Let's go ahead and flip it over. Look at that beautiful crust we've got forming on there. That's exactly what I'm going for. A nice crust. All right, I'm ready to put this into the oven. So I'm going to slip my cover onto my pan and move it right into the oven. All right, see you when it's done. So this has got a good start in the oven and I'm going to go ahead and pop in some potatoes and some shallots off to the side, sort of get them started. My stars, if smell o vision was a thing right now, oh, ho, ho. all right, let's go ahead and take a temperature reading. Let's see where we're at. I'm looking for 140, which is rare, but it will still cook while it's sitting on the cutting board. I want it to be about 150 for myself. And I think we're just about going to be there. Perfect. I'm going to give it maybe another minute. Stir around my potatoes in here. I'm going to give it, like I said, about one, maybe two minutes. I'm taking it out and putting it to rest. Right, time to come on out. I'm going to put my meat on the cutting board and then I'm going to come back for my potatoes. I'm going to cover this with a little foil. Let it rest for anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Right. Got the pan out of the oven and back on the burner. 
We're going to go ahead and get these potatoes a nice fry up in all the pan drippings. I sprinkled them with a little bit of kosher salt when they were in the oven. Now you'll notice that nothing sticks to this cast iron pan. When you have a pan that's properly seasoned, it's just like nonstick in a lot of ways. So that's really fabulous. Potatoes are coming along nicely. I steamed up a whole bunch of carrots the other night. So they're actually already cooked. I'm just going to warm them up in the pan with the potatoes and get a little flavoring with the pan drippings. Let's have a look at this piece of meat. Mmm. You don't want to cut into a piece of meat right when it comes out of the oven. You want all the juices to pull back into the meat. If I were to cut, cut this right away, this whole pan probably would have been, or this cutting board would have been full of all the juices and then your meat would have dried out. So I'm going to go ahead and find the grain because you want to cut against the grain. Let's see here. I think I see it there. Now of all the things I have in my kitchen, would you believe I don't have a meat fork? Heh, go figure that. I'm kind of doing this awkwardly, so let's see if I can get this at the correct angle here so you can see. Oh, this is cutting really easy. It's nice and tender. You can see that it's juicy. See all the juice in there? This is going to be delicious. Let's actually have a little bite. Oh, wow. That's really good. The rub has kind of flavored the meat really well. It's not tough at all. It's nice and tender. Mmm. All right, let's get some of this plated up. So there you have it. One way to cook a tri-tip indoors using your cast iron pan and your oven. It's time for me to go eat.